how's it going today we're going to fish this mark here the fishing is not great at the moment so i've just decided to come here and just chance me luck here in next to this deep water out in front of me there is a basin of about 25 meters of water and it runs from this island out to that one and then here like this right beyond that island is 300 meters of water and without a shadow of a doubt what lives there is dopey dogs velvet bellies ling maybe a brosma if i'm really really lucky or tusk as some people call it and this is what i'm going to fit this this is the video today that's what i'm going to do tonight and uh, i'm going to talk about rigs and uh yeah we're going to talk about fish as well yes we're going to talk about the fish because I don't think enough attention is given to these deep water monsters. So I'll try to get you a decent look at a, at a velvet belly. If I don't catch one, I've got a picture I can put in and get a decent look at a, uh, at a black mouth if I can as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Maybe I catch something to eat as well. That would also be good. So you saw me put out the other the first cast. That was the up and over ring rig. That's what that was. And we'll have a look at that later. And over here we've got the traditional South African um, big game rig and this is just tied out of one piece of 100 pound all the way up to the swivel there right then we got this pulley bead here right and it's just trapped between two stop knots and then we got some 80 pounds of, that runs off that that's for the sinker and down to a swivel now depending on what I'm doing if I want a rotten bottom, I'll just tie on a weaker piece there. But I want to get these leads back. The ground, the ground's really good here, so I'm not going to mess around with that. I don't want to lose any more leads. And then, uh, yeah, so so you don't have to change the whole lot all the time. I just changed the last piece. So if I want a weak link there, I'll just put some lighter line on the swivel. So that's it. The hook is an 8 uh, Mutsu Circle. This one is offset because they're really hard for some reason to find a Mutsu that isn't offset. But... I don't know why they do that, it's, it's completely unnecessary. A hair or dingle dangle. And the other one fishing more or less the same. But we'll have a look at that when it comes in. So we'll do a bait as well, will we? Okay. Ah, yeah. And before I forget again, right, the rods are the Sonics as they are a lot in this trip. Boom! The reels are the 525 Megs. Boom! All hail the 525. Hail. So that's it, now we'll do a bait, okay? I have to get that out of my system. Yeah. This is a very simple bait. They get very, very complex, and you'll see them in some other videos, I'm sure, but not in this one. Anyway, so that's it there. The bait goes between the two beads, that's it. For this one. If there's no bead, it goes between the bottom bead and the hook. That's it. So, depending on your preference right you can fish a skin side in or skin side out this isn't a new theory so yeah i'm sure everybody's used to it so you just make a little groove in it yes and then it will fold that's it very simple bait no need for baiting tools or any of that malarkey there we go then the elastic will take care of the rest of the job for you this is not a big bait by any means for me this is a yeah this is just what I'd use for torn back or whatever. And this is a perfect way to fish for rays as well. No matter what ray you're fishing for, it doesn't matter. Giant skate, whatever. This is the way you want to do it, in my opinion, anyway. I'm sure everybody's got their opinion, but I know it works. So then once you got that done, right, like I said, up to the top, down to the bottom, over to the other side, and you just alternate between those two. Just alternate like that. Okay. Over to the other side, to the top, back down again, like that. Don't do it too tight or your bait will twang together. Okay, so then you go right up to the top then and you just detwang it. That's it. And once you have that elastic taken control of up there, it's not going to twang your bait together. Special attention paid to the bead at the back there just to make sure it doesn't shoot off. It's not really that necessary with very small baits like this, but big, big, big baits is very, 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 very necessary. Okay, just saying like, you know, boom. So this is it, this is how it connects to the lead weight. Right, you just go up to the bait clip there like that. And you put it on, that's basically it, just like that. Boom, yes, nice. Okay, right, both of these rigs are in the same rig tutorials called North Meets South. 
I mean, if you really want, I'll do a, a rig build on it, the South African rig. There are so many different variations of it, right? But it's just a change in diameter line and other stuff like that. It's a very, yeah, it's a very simple rig to make, but it does have its drawbacks. One of the things I don't like is the way it drags the lead weight. And I fixed that by doing the pulley ring rig, which I'll also link in now I've mentioned it. The build for that, that's in, yep, that's in two parts, unfortunately, because I was a new tuber back then. Yes. <laughs> and, like I said, the other two, the up and over ring rig and the South African rig. They'll all be linked in the description. Okay, nice. The wonderful thing about Norway is that if, you know, the fishing isn't great, the scenery is always magic. <laughs> look at that, look at that. Look at those mountains over there, man. Look at them. Well. Yes. Would not like to be under those clouds over there. That looks brutal. Very, very purdy. That's what it is. If anybody wants to know the name of the fjord here, it's, I think this part of it is called something else, but it's a part of a bigger fjord called, oddly enough, the Big Fjord. It's Storfjord, it's called. So that's what it means, the Big Fjord. And it's pretty bloody big. And it's pretty bloody deep as well. I think at its deepest point, it's nearly 700 meters deep. Whoa, you got a bite. As I was blab blabbing. Come on, fishy. Do it for me. Daytime action. Unusual. Could be a crab though. Oh, that's no crab. It's a doby dog. Well, we'll see what that develops into. It's developed into this. Okay. 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 This is encouraging. Yes, it is. <laughs> Ah, right, yes, slack line. <laughs> Let's see what we got. I would hazard a guess to say that that fish might be on there. You know, <laughs> if he isn't, yeah, he's on all right. Feels like to be a good fish, actually. Yeah, it's a nice fish. So the tide is starting to flood right now, which is really weird to pick up a fish so soon off the, off the bottom of the tide. But I'm not complaining. So I got that on the up and over ring rig. So the lead is quite far up off the bottom. If it's a South African rig, right now I'd be scraping through the kelp. It's not really a big problem, but it makes f fighting the fish a little bit harder. That's the, that's the only drawback with it, with that rig, is that dragging of the lead weight. But, oh, it's a ray! Haha, <laughs> it's my first ray in Norway. That, oh, that sounds ludicrous, man. A tawny! My word! Nice! I know, it's just a flat dogfish to you lot over there, but I haven't seen one in a long time. So nice! Oh, he's a pretty one too. Nice! So tarbacks, right? I've heard them referred to as flat dogfish over the UK. And uh, yeah, they really do a job and stuff. Look at this. Like that's an 8 hook. hooker. It's not a small one either. There's the bait there, <laughs> look at him. Look at this, look. This lad here, what is he, about four pounds or something like that? We're not gonna weigh him, we're just gonna put him back. Boom. Yeah, nice. He's a pretty one. Nice little slip away, let's hope it doesn't live up to his name. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway, off he went anyway. Got bored trying to wait for him to swim off. Then went to go and get a stick, give him a poke, and I came back, he was gone. <laughs> anyway, so my first Norwegian ray. Nice. So I'll give you a look at the up and over ring rig, right? There's the bait on the hair dingle dangle. This is 100 pounds. Then we'll go up to this here. This two piece of loomy tube just uh, stops things from tangling. And that there is a 7.5 mil 
ring for assist hooks for uh, slow jigs, fast jigs, that type of a deal. You can get them on the internet. Assist hook, solid rings is what you should search for. And then we got a hundred pounds mono up to an up and over gadget of your choice. Mine is a little relay clip. So that's it. Well, I'll show you how it works. There's the lead weight. There's the ring there, right? So you just fold them over like that. You take the ring up to the clip. Bumski. Yes. You take it down. I clip it on, that's it. And it gives you all that room for the bait there. Okay, that's it. That's the up and over ring rig. Of course I picked up a ray on it. It's one of the best rigs for a ray. And now we got another fish. Oh my word. I think it's on anyway. Is it another ray? Probably is. Probably is. Oh my word, it's on. It's really big. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Well, looks like we're into the thornbacks anyway. I had not expected this at all. No, it's great. Always gives me surprises. Maybe I'll work them a bit harder. It's staying very deep anyway, so it's a decent fish. I can feel him in the kelp. Get him up. Here it comes. I can see it down the bottom there. Here's the leader. Oh, it's a fairly decent one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, he was a little bit large to lift all that way, I thought. So, I come down and get him. Oh, he's a big boy. I think it's my, definitely my best turn back, that one. There he is. I mean, he's pretty big for a dude, actually. I'm gonna get the scales on him. Yeah, my, my best is 10. So we give a look at it. Here we go. 11 pounds 16. Boom, there we go. My me, that's, that's my PB now. Nice. We just throw him back. We we'll see if he swims off. They're devil for sitting around. And I got the other rods in the water. He'd be grand. I'll come back in a minute and check on him. So, nice. My first two tombacks and my PB on the same day. Excellent buzz. So two. I didn't even get to say first cast fish. It was first cast fish and second cast fish. That's a first. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I've got the up and over ring rig. Going up again. Ready to be sent out. So that's what we're going to do. This is the gaff here we're working. <laughs> Holiday homes. <laughs> Sometimes I never get to fish the same place twice because next time I return is a resort of some type or an airport or <laughs> many different things. Yeah, a lot of stuff turns into other things by the time I get back around to it again. So I don't know if I'll ever get to fish this mark again. So, but I'm enjoying the, this one already. So we get this bait out. Take the brakes off a little bit. Splish. Come on, down it goes. Where the catch is Billy, nobody knows. So I'm gonna cast out uh, the South African rig. Rebated that one. Boom, ready to go. Yes, yes. Should we get lashed out? Let's see if we catch another fish. Yeah. So well, let's go. Splish. There we go, Let's see what it gets us. <laughs> so I did not expect that, I thought it was going to be brutal. Two fish straight out of the gate, nice. Two tarmbacks, one a double. <laughs> not complaining, not complaining at all. So what other monsters of the deep will turn up tonight? So the rods, there's been no bites on them since I put them out anyway. If you would oblige please, fishes. I mean, we're on the clock here, you know. Double figure, turn back. It's nothing to sneeze at anyway, that's for sure. Surprisingly enough, they're not that common here in Norway. I mean, I've seen a few caught, but uh, they're not that common at all. I mean, if that's a constant size, I mean, there's some real big ones out there. You could get one up to 20 maybe. 
I mean, I have heard of giants of 15 in Ireland and stuff, you know. So if you can get them to 15 pounds in Ireland, I'm pretty sure you can get one to 15 pound here or even more. So anyway, so this 8 0 hook is nothing too stupid now with the size of these fish. Getting a bite. Another ray settling on a bait. <laughs> I think he's got it then, has he? Okay, okay. <laughs> Point made, buddy. Oh yeah, you're not supposed to strike with circle hooks anyway. <laughs> so you kind of just let the fish do the work for you there. Unless they're swimming off, then you just tighten down. Oh, holy crap, this is a monster. Ah, about the same as the last. It's just the... Uh, there's kelp beds out there, they seem bigger than what they are. Here's the leader. Walk up to meet him. Used to be something different. No, it's another ray. Okay. They're all dudes as well. Whoa, 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 bloody hell. <laughs> this boy's got some poke in him, I tell you. Oh. He thinks he's a skate, this guy. Anyway. Come on, buddy. Oh, well, here he is now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a boy. <laughs> there he is. Circle hook. Ooh, don't get your finger in there, Bill. There he is. Hooked where he should be. There he is. Get the scales on him. A lot of horns. Muy spiky. 12. Just over 12. Nice. So we drop them back. These things are beasts. The tide's up now. Maybe we are right. So. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Ray. Off he goes into the deep. So we fish on. We see what happens. Yeah. My hook choice tonight is big because the fjords around here are very deep and it means velvet bellies. It means dopey dogs. That's what it means. And the velvet belly is a very tiny little type of dogfish with lights on his belly, bioluminescent hairs on his stomach. It's a type of bacteria that grows in there and they glow from the bottom. So if a predator was underneath, he would be hidden because of the illumination of the sky above. So you get me? Just like, you know, most fish are light on the bottom and dark on the top. It's that type of thing, but for deep water. That's what it is. So, the velvet bellies, yeah. So, they can't get an 8 hole hook into their mouths. They just can't do it, they're tiny. A really big one would be 28 centimeters. So, well, of course they can get it on their dogfish. <laughs> probably, get, probably get two out of the them. I doubt very much they get on the hook, but we see a lot of rattly bites if they are there. And the baits will come in, they'd be knackered because they got very sharp teeth. Not much mass to them, but they got like razor sharp teeth. And they'll tear stuff to bits really quickly. We got a fish. See what we got. Pretty good run anyway. I think it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. Quite a nice fish. A couple of pounds. As long as it's not dopey dog, we're good. Yeah, it's pulling quite nice. Oh, it's pulling a bit now. Working hard now, it's getting into the jams here. Oh, it's come off, has it? It's pulling quite well, I can see it now. <laughs> of course it's the Toby dog. What's a ling? Yeah, nice. Din dins. Yeah, nice ling. It's about three, three or four. Nice ling. Lovely job. Nice little scrap of them. Fair few ling around here anyway. Right, out with another one. Nice little ling. About three, four pounds I'd say. So we get this boy lashed out. Boom. 
So I got one in close, one out far, one is out close, 70 meters, the other one's out over 100 or so, roughly. We see what happens. So we get another link. We got a bite. It's like lamb, but look of it. So we're gonna get on this fish now. Pack up my things would be great. Yeah, we're in. It's really great because I don't want to be eating the cod. They can't eat the flatfish. So a few ling, it's nice. It's gonna be a dopey dog, isn't it? Yes, of course it is, Billy. Oh, it is a dopey dog. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Yeah, it's a dopey dog. <sighs> anyway, one dopey dog. A very small dopey dog. Anyway. Now, I want to hurt the dopey dog. We're going to get you a look at this guy, right? All these little pores here, right? They're filled with a type of jelly. There's like little cells in there. They're called ampullae de Lorenzini. And they've got this um, electroconductive gel in them and it allows these fish to find stuff in the depths and stuff like that. Fantastic adaptation. And they've got proper shark teeth, be it small or not, they are proper shark teeth. And if you, he'll make a mess of you if you stick your finger in there anyway, that's for sure. So we get Doby back in the sea. Yes. And they got no swim bladder or anything else because they're sharks. Their liver does that for them. And uh, so they don't suffer from barotrauma or anything else like that. Their eyes are orange in the daytime anyway. I've never caught one in the daytime, but I've seen pictures anyway. So there we go. Oh, Dopey Dog. There he goes. Goodbye, Dopey. So, another cast. Mine is Dopey Dog. So. Maybe we got a link this time. There we go. Nice link. I didn't know, but they have that same arrangement as the hake do with the second set of teeth there. Can't see down any in his throat or anything else, but they got that second set. They're not as sharp as hake teeth, but they're pretty sharp anyway. Yes. So, right, I'm really bored. Let's wait a link. We got three pound two. Yeah, I was bang on. Three pound two. More or less sat motionless now for the last ages. I mean, not a damn thing happening. Anyway, so uh, this is going to be last cast, I reckon. Uh, run out of bait. This is it. The last cast scenario. Yeah. Down it goes. It catches me another monster ray. Nobody knows. See if we get another beastie. Yeah. Run out of bait. It's time for me to go home. So we're going to take in the last rod. There's something on it, but it's probably a crab. So we see what's going on there. No, there's nothing there. Just some crabs in the weed, just pulling out. Yep. Anyway, so there's nothing there. Nice. Boom. So that's it now. Rays, ling, doby dogs. Fantastic night. So I'm Billy. This is Billy catching fish wherever you are in the world. Remember, I'll see you on the beach. Bye.